Thelma is one of the most endearing, heartwarming, action-packed, and hilarious films of 2024. What's your plan for the day? Ah, the usual. Hello? Grandma. Danny? You sound so strange. I'm in jail. Oh my God. Thelma comes from director Josh Marglin making his directorial feature debut. He has worked uh, in the film industry for a little bit, um, but primarily as an actor before transitioning into this larger directorial role. Thelma had its premiere back at Sundance in January of 2024 to very positive reviews. Um, this is a movie, without getting into spoilers, that is difficult not to enjoy. Essentially, the premise of the film is rooted in Margolin's real-life experience with his grandmother. Even the name of the character, Thelma, is his grandmother's real name. Margolin's grandmother is turning 104, I believe, this year, still alive as of the recording of this video, and essentially she, in real life, was scammed. And that is the premise of this film. We follow Thelma, played by the legendary June Squibb, and we'll talk about her for sure in a little bit, but we follow June Squibb's character Thelma as she seeks revenge, inspired by Tom Cruise, seeks revenge on the men who scammed her via the telephone. The premise is obviously interesting and unique and made all that much better by the real life inspiration. Adding to the inspiration, the majority of the scenes shot in June Squibb's apartment were actually shot in the real Thelma's apartment, just adding another layer to the project. I think it's important before I dive into any more details of the film just to take a moment to talk about June Squibb. June Squibb's story is absolutely fascinating and it's really inspiring. She didn't have her first role in uh, a movie until she was in her 60s. She received an Oscar nomination in a supporting role for her performance in Nebraska when she was in her 80s and she landed her first ever leading role in a feature film in Thelma at 94 years old. It's a truly unique and remarkable story and her performance is so good. She perfectly captures this woman who is fighting against time who is trying to hold on to her independence and is aware that things are slipping away but isn't quite ready to move on to that next stage. A lot of the power from this film comes from her relationship with her grandson Danny, played by Fred Heckinger, who has had kind of a slow but significant rise over the last decade or so. He had a small role in eighth grade, great film, uh, had another role in The Woman in the Window, not so great film, but then appeared in a significant role in the first season of The White Lotus uh, and is billed to have a significant role in the Spider-Man universe in the upcoming film Craven the Hunter. So here we have uh, an actor who is kind of starting his rise, and we have an actor in June Squibb who is near the end of her journey. The relationship between these two is beautiful, honestly. It feels so real, like they have this genuine love between the two, and we're just kind of privy to it. We're fortunate enough to see it on screen. You can see so clearly Danny's love for his grandmother, and it never feels contrived. His character is kind of a, a, a bit of an oddball. He, like June, is at a transitional point in his life. He's in his early to mid-20s, and he 
needs to transition into adulthood and June is kind of at that point where she's transitioning to needing more assistance to not being able to do everything on her own and the two of them while on the surface are in such different points in their lives really do connect over this acknowledgement that they need help and that there is more to life that they've experienced so far in positive and negative ways. Outside of this relationship, which, as I mentioned, is just absolutely beautiful, it will, I think, make anyone emotional who maybe has been close to a grandparent or a parent and is currently facing the potential loss of that person or has already gone through that loss. This film, which I will dive in more in a minute, is really addressing mortality and these relationships that are most important to us. Another relationship that becomes more important in the second and third act of the film is Thelma's friend Ben in this film played by the legendary Richard Roundtree who unfortunately passed away just a couple months before this movie played at Sundance. This was Roundtree's last performance and he also had a legendary career of course most notably as the amazing the iconic John Shaft. His relationship with Thelma in this film is so important because he is kind of one step ahead of her in acknowledging that he's old, in acknowledging that he can't quite do everything that he used to do. He needs some help at times and Thelma, the amazing woman, that she is, is struggling to come to terms with this, is struggling to ask for help. And it's through uh, Richard Roundtree's character that she really starts to realize that it's okay to ask for help. What I will say, the two characters that didn't do too much for me were Danny's parents, um, June Squibb, Thelma's daughter, and... Uh, son-in-law. They were very much just playing kind of stock characters here for a laugh or two exaggerated versions of kind of worrying, uh, doting parents. And they, they were okay, but really the film is about the relationship between Thelma and Danny, and then to a lesser extent, Thelma and Ben. I also just want to take a second to talk about the visuals of this film. From the opening shot, you can clearly see, if you know kind of what you're looking for, that this was shot on anamorphic lenses. Specifically, uh, the cinematographer David Bolin used uh, the Hawk V-Light anamorphic lenses, which were the same lenses used in Moonlight, for example. And they have a very interesting visual quality, particularly when they are shot wide open with all of the light coming into the lens. We have these fascinating distortions around the edges of the frame, creating a very soft yet kind of contorted shallow depth of field, which leaves us with a very dreamlike uh, kind of otherworldly quality and kind of seems a little bit unnatural. I wasn't really sure what to make of it from the get-go, but I think that it does really work here. It shows that clear kind of transitional theme that we're exploring here. We have mostly Thelma um, in clear focus, but then as we move away from her, things become distorted and twisted, and we can kind of see this as Thelma holding on to this normality as the world 
the reality of her life kind of closes in on her. I've mentioned kind of a few themes that Thelma is exploring. It's touching on mortality and not in a, a particularly solemn way. It's very much a project that is asking us to acknowledge the inevitability of death, but also to use it as an opportunity to live our life and to make sure that we are building and maintaining the relationships and connections to those who matter the most to us. It's not a depressing film about death. It's sad, sure, but it's really more about the beauty of the experiences that we do have while we are on this earth. It's also very much about asking for help, particularly as we move through stages of this life. As I mentioned earlier, Danny and Thelma are separated by about 60 or 70 years, but they have a shared lived experience in the sense that they are both hesitant, they're reticent to move to this next stage of their life because it's scary. And what Margolin is showing us here is that yes, these changes in life are scary. They can be terrifying even, but if you have people around you who can support you, it makes these transitions so much easier. There was one moment at the end of the film and I'm not going to get into any spoilers here, but there was a line from June Squibb from Thelma that was so beautiful and profound, but not contrived as she was driving in her grandson's Danny's car and she's looking out the window kind of in awe at the beauty around her. And she says something and I'm just paraphrasing here, but she's looking at these trees and she says, the bottoms of these trees are so gnarled. They shouldn't be alive, but they're still alive. And we see Danny beside her acknowledging the metaphor, acknowledging the beauty. And I think everyone around me who was watching this film with me was either close to tears or allowing those tears to fall, which is a pretty amazing experience to share with others. If you watched this video, you're the best. I really do appreciate it. If you don't mind liking the video, if you haven't subscribed, you can do that as well. Comment down below is also helpful. And when I post the next one, uh, please watch that one too. Thanks.